everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rash Pixel FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Uh, we are talking about paper today, your favorite subject ever. I know, paper organizing. Mm-hmm. Yay! Who doesn't like to organize their paper? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> People are like, are you crazy? Yeah. We we are continuing our money management month, the month of money uh, on the podcast. We're talking about organizing financial paperwork, a special breed of paperwork. We're going to be digging into that uh, very soon. But before we do that, you should head over to TakeControlADHD.com, get to know us a bit better, listen to the show right on the web, subscribe to the mailing list right there on the homepage, and get an email with the latest episode and our, our newsletter we send out uh, I don't know, a couple times a month. You can connect with us on Twitter and Facebook at Take Control ADHD. And call us, please leave us a voicemail at 503-664-4ADD. Get your voice, your thoughts on this show. We would love to hear from you. There yes, we and we did hear from someone we do. About, we- about money management and ADHD. It was very exciting. We did. Heather from Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. uh, who we have heard from before, and she is delightful. Mm-hmm. She's, and she's, gave us some great ideas, which really um, relates to the blog post that I that I posted this week about how to get out of credit card debt. Um, she had some ideas that that really align with what I was talking about there too, with consolidating and, and things like that. So. so let's let's hear just a little bit from Heather here on her ideas of consolidating. And another follow up from last week, we talked a little bit about the resources you should avail yourself to uh, in terms of you know outside support, debt reduction counselors. And so she talks a little bit about that. Let's hear from Heather from Pennsylvania. Uh, our dear friend of the show right now. Uh, what we initially did, uh, we went to see a, an investment financial counselor to get some advice on, um, you know, the best route to take. And, you know, they, they said, you know, they didn't have a lot of good advice. Next, we, we went to a debt management um, counselor. And this is someone who has the ability for people who are really in a really bad place um, to take over your credit cards and um, negotiate, or not negotiate, but make agreements with the creditors so that you're making an automatic monthly payment uh, to the debt manager, and the debt manager is then paying it to your creditors, um, and, and hopefully they reduce your rates a little bit in exchange for that. Um, she said we weren't quite in the position where that was a good idea for us, so what we ended up doing was going to our um, credit union. I'm a member of a, a state employee's credit union that I got a pretty good rate on, and they had a, a low-rate credit card um, with a, a high um, credit limit. And we opened the credit card, and we consolidated all of our um, outstanding, you know, all of our credit card debt onto one card um, that we're not carrying with us, we're not using it, and we're setting up automatic payments the day that we get paid um, to come out of our joint bank account. And uh, that's one way of kind of creating accountability for each other. You know, it's a joint account. And neither of us feel comfortable uh, using it without asking the other. And the other thing that we're doing, we're using Mint to create budgets. Um, we're making sure we have a cushion in our bank account so we're, we're not um, – this month's bills are being paid with last month's income so we have a little cushion. And uh, the other thing that we're trying is there is a service called um, On Budget. It's a prepaid card. And we got, uh, I got one for myself, and I'm thinking about getting one for my husband, um, where you automatically have every month a certain amount taken out from your checking account onto this card. And um, you use this prepaid card um, to do your in spending other than the bills that are automatically being paid from your account. And it keeps track of what you're doing and kind of sets up a recommended budget for you. And the best thing about it is you can't go, you can't spend, if you're only using this card, you can't spend more than the amount that you put on it because it'll just be declined. There's no penalty. It'll just say you're out of money. So it really forces you to say, this is how much extra money I have this month beyond what my necessary bills are. And I need to plan ahead. I have a trip coming up where I'm going to need this amount of money, so I'm not going to eat fast food today, and I'm not going to buy this or that. Now, Heather's voicemail was feature-rich. She told us a lot more than that, and so we've decided to go ahead and just give you the whole voicemail. Uh, If you are interested in hearing more of Heather's story, uh, we put it up in the show notes for this episode. So uh, if you just head over to uh, TakeControlADHD.com slash podcast slash 218. You will be able to find that's the current episode on the site. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, people are probably going to appreciate 
hearing somebody else's story other than just mine and yours. Yes, right. No, I <laughs> right? absolutely agree. So you know, I what love was, that. You know, it was it was great and sad uh, listening to Heather's story. That a it was great to hear that she and her fiance are, are really getting their financial lives under control, uh, or and. B, it's smart. Yeah, They're very, very smart. smart. Yes. But B, how sad it was that the story was so familiar. Just oh, having know. been there. I mean, that's just Me really, too. it's very difficult. Absolutely. So anyway, thank you so much, Heather, as always, for participating in the community. We love hearing from you. Thank you. And we want to hear from other people, too. If you have uh, additional tips and suggestions, things that work for you, um, we want to hear those, whether it's on voicemail or send us a message, whatever you want to do. Um, I think the more we can get out there, the better. Absolutely. All right, let's get started. Okay. okay. We're going to talk about organizing paper. Sure. Let's do and, it. And I'm going to have to like do some self-promoting. Oh, let's start with that. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, I, I have to suggest that when you are organizing paper to go over to Take Control ADHD, go under our products, and find the paper solution. Yes. And get, and get your paper organized. Now, granted, the paper solution is not just about financial paper. It's about all paper that you might have in your home or office. And so um, it's it's certainly goes into much more detail than what we're going to go into today. But I do have some points um, that I want to share today that are specific to financial um, paperwork and how to get those things in order. So so yeah, so start with that. getting the getting yeah. the presentation. It's one hour. It's ten bucks, yes. and it is so worth it to have Nikki be your coach and walk you through the process of getting your paper in order. Even if you just focus on your financial paper as your project, this will help you to, to wrap your head around it. So, absolutely, mm-hmm. the steps are the same, yes. and yeah, absolutely. So it's 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 worth that small investment. Yes. I am. Yeah, so that's my self promotion. Yes, all right. <laughs> so we'll get that out of the way. So and let's uh, let's talk a little bit then about what you the kinds of things you deal with when you're working with your with your clients who have paper that they need to get under control. Well, okay. So are you asking me a question or? Yeah, t- I'm saying <laughs> Nikki, it's story time. It's story tell time. Tell me, tell me a story, Nikki. <laughs> well, I can tell you that paper is probably um, an issue for the majority of my clients. Uh, it may not be the very first thing that we talk about, but it, it definitely comes up. Um, it's come up in group coaching. When I've talked to a group of people, they're like, oh, yes, paper, paper. It's, it drives them crazy, the paper piles. And uh, you know what happens, I think, especially with ADHD, is that if it's not interesting, if it's not exciting, then the brain, your body doesn't go towards it. You go as far away from it as possible. And so that's why paper accumulates is because it's not interesting and um, – um, and it can become so overwhelming that you shut down and you just want to ignore it and you just kind of hope that it goes away. But unfortunately, it doesn't. And, uh, you know, that's why I did the presentation is because it really breaks down the steps on how to take back control. Um, so it is possible, but you just have to pay attention and and take some time to do it. Right, right. Yeah. And you know what the first step is? I, I Well, I feel like I could guess, but I do have a bit of a heads up. Purge. Purge. You got to get rid of the old stuff because it doesn't make any sense for you to to try to organize filing cabinets or paper on your desk if you've got old stuff that you don't need. And this is the thing I think that people have so much trouble with and I, that, that relates to needing to purge, which is we don't have a good sense of what we need to keep in terms of financial paperwork. I'll bet most people you say, what are the most important documents that you need to keep? And they wouldn't be able to answer it. Right, you know, well, right. I keep my passport, right. you know, right, right. Yeah. Birth certificates, marriage certificates, I guess. Yeah. I keep all, well, well, but then to the other extreme, people will be like, well, I yeah. keep all of my statements. I keep, you know, they don't get rid of anything that's financial because they're so afraid of right. something. And, and I'm get, not even sure what, yeah, but yeah. That's what inspires you to just say, you know, I don't know. So I keep it all. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and there's a statistic out in the world and it, it's uh, a very common organizing statistic that we've talked about on the show several times, but it's that kind of 80, 20 rule. Right? right. And with paper, how it applies is that we p- typically only retrieve 20% of what we file. So the other 80% just sits there in our, you know, filing cabinets and we don't need it. I mean, we just don't need it. And it's taking up so much space that then it makes it harder to put anything new in the file. And again, that's how we end up just kind of 
piling paper on top of the cabinets and on our, our desks and, and such. So, um, there's just so much that we don't need. And we have a very handy worksheet that's called important papers, right? I think that's what it's called. I hope. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> important, important papers. And, um, I suggest, you know, downloading that from our, our downloads and taking a look at it, see how it, it, uh, is relevant to you. If you are still concerned, especially if you work from home or you have some special tax needs, you know, Take this list, take it to your CPA or accountant, or I guess that is a CPA is an accountant. Is an accountant. <laughs> you're, certified. you're a certified public accountant or <laughs> yes. your public accountant or just your accountant. Or your accountant. Your uncertified whoever. private yeah. accountant. Financial advisor. Right. That was what I was looking for. <laughs> oh, okay. That's good too. <laughs> yeah. But take the list in and, uh, you know, see, is this, is this right for me? Is there something else I should be keeping or whatever? But get the, get a second opinion so that you really are only keeping what you need. Um, and so purging is definitely, I think, the first step in the organizing process. Um, and you've got to make it an intentional project. Do you know what I mean by that? We'll talk more about that. Okay. So people get into trouble. I think this is just my own opinion. What I've seen is that they get into trouble when they just do a little bit at a time and then they don't go back to the project. And I'm not saying this doesn't mean that you don't break your sessions down into maybe smaller time frames. And I know this gets kind of confusing, but you have to kind of set the intention that I'm going to purge, which means I'm going to start and I'm going to end. So I may only do 15 minutes at a time, which is fine, but you've got to be disciplined in going back and continuing the purging process until you're finished. It's not going to do you any good to just spend 15 minutes one day, start purging, and then never go back to it in six months. Right. Do you see the difference there? Yeah. yeah. Because, I okay. mean, when you think about it, this is a project. Getting your paper under control is a project, which means it has a start date, it has a defined list of multiple steps, and it has an end date. Right. There, there will be a time where you are in control of your papers, and then you're into sort of just ongoing maintenance of knowing what your process is every day, every week, every month, what you need to keep, what you don't. But getting in control is a project that you have to, to set the intention of finishing. Yes. And I do have a couple of suggestions on how to do that for people. Okay. So, um, I think that, you know, I used to do this a lot where I'll be like, well, how, how long do you think it's going to take? And they have, you know, no clue how long it's going to take. We really don't know how long organizing is going to take, uh, you know, as much as we'd like to try to think we know. I was even surprised when I was telling you that I, that I cleaned out my, uh, closet the other day. Mm -hmm. I was shocked how long it took me. And I've been doing this for years and I was still shocked. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I can't believe this took me so long. So we really don't know. Um, so the best way I think to, to, well, the best way to do this is just to start and set up a few organizing sessions on your calendar. Don't be c too concerned about, I need to only have five or I'm only going to work on this for two hours. Just, just start with, you know, setting up a few organizing sessions, put, put them in your calendar, be committed to it, make sure you're there, stick to the appointment, get started and just kind of be aware of how long it's going to take you. So after that first session, okay, I worked on it for a half hour and I got through a whole, you know, box or I, you know, however you're collecting the paper, or you're going through the filing cabinet. I got through five filing, you know, uh, folders or whatever, yeah. but just that first session can kind of be your, um, guide as, as far as, okay, how long is this really taking? Um, but the great thing is, is if you've already scheduled a few sessions ahead of time, then if it's not taking as long as you need, then you can cancel those sessions. And if it is taking longer then you just add more, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. I, I think we just have to be a little bit more flexible when we, um, are starting to plan our, our actual, time that we're working. Um, the second tip that I think we need to do is you need to tell somebody about your intentions. We got to be accountable for this. Just like any time we've talked about accountability, it's such a huge, um, plus, and it can make such a big difference for you on keeping you on track. So tell someone that you, Hey, I'm scheduling five sessions. This is what my goal is. Check in on me. Let me, you know, let me tell you how it's going or whatever, but just tell someone can make a big right, difference. Right. Right. And then lastly, I just have to say, you have to be committed to this. You got to show up. You got to do the work. Um, you know, most of your paper is junk paper, right? We already talked about that. 80% of it you don't need. So it really, you know, even though it takes time to go through it, 
you got to give it the time. Like you got to, you got to do it. Yeah. Um, take right. action. Take action. Well, this goes into the, the, uh, you know, being intentional about it. If you're, if right. you're, if you're really being intentional, you're going to show up and you're going to take action. If you're not, then you're really just paying lip service to your calendar. Absolutely. And as you're going through the purging process, you know, take out that important papers uh, worksheet and you can use that sort of as a guide, you know, um, as far as, okay, should I keep this? Should I not? You know, if you get stuck, because I'm sure that that can happen as we've already discussed. Right, right. Okay. So my second tip is eliminate your paper altogether by going paperless, Pete, right? Oh, hallelujah. How exciting is that? Hallelujah. Amen. Automatic bill paying is a great way of a start, right? To uh, t- to go paperless. It's easy. It's quick. You, and uh, um, I don't. You want to talk more about that? Because I just feel like you're the expert on that. Well, <laughs> you know, I there are, there are two uh, sides to going paperless, and the first, as you say, is is you know signing up for bill pay, or automatic p- bill pay. Pay your bills online. Stop writing checks. Right. As soon as you write a check, you know, you have you have there you've missed a service that you probably could go bill pay from your gas company, your electric company. Your, don't have them send you bills. And, right. and some of this is a little bit challenging because, you know, for example, I've got we've, we've still got school loans for my, my wife's graduate degree. She's we're still paying school loans there and we, we get a bill from them every month. And and it's kind of you, you forget you, you grow sort of numb to those really long term bills, your 30 year mortgage, your I mean, those are really long term bills. And you got to go paperless on those and set up your system to be able to to accommodate getting rid of the paper in your life. Because it goes back to that, you know, we did a podcast on this a, a long time ago. It was the inbox versus the work box. Right. Mm-hmm. And and having that inbox be a place that you can confidently get your bills into a system. If you have some paperless and some not, you're not really committing to the paperless process. And that makes it more challenging, I think, to, to mm-hmm. keep your head around some things. So that's one side is make sure that you're you're paying your bills online. You you it, It's retraceable. You you have a record of the bills that you paid. You have a, rec- a digital record of the statements that you've received. It's uh, it is generally, I think, an easy and and better way to 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 do money, uh, you know, your relationship to money uh, is by doing it online. The second piece, though, is to take the existing paper that you have and get it into that digital system, too. And this is everything from receipts to, to uh, you know, the statements that you can't go paperless, et cetera, and make sure that all those, you know, everything that, that comes in goes into that process. I put a link in the show notes to my favorite scanning app, on the iPhone and iPad called ScanBot. Um, mm-hmm. And it's it's one of my very favorites. It's incredibly fast. I no longer have a scanner. Uh, I just use my phone. Uh, and it, whenever something comes in, I pop open ScanBot. It takes a picture within a couple of seconds and uploads it to Evernote. So I don't even have to think about it. I can even, I, I schedule my, you know, what I used to do is my mail processing session, the appointment that I'd set my, with myself each week. I now do in Evernote. I don't have any paper to process it all. It all is in Evernote through ScanBot. So... Wow, yeah, that's you can, great. This is not a digital episode, but no, that, that's but, the theory, and, and yeah. that's the tool I use. So That's awesome. So I don't know. Well, did I cover it? I Which, think so. Okay. And I think that, I mean, what you're saying, at least what I'm hearing, is that you know eliminates that stress of not paying bills. It eliminates the stress of, of writing the checks. It, it doesn't, you know, you're not going to have that paper coming in. It's already in your inbox. And I can tell you, too, um, if you're not sure if, if a certain company does it, you just have to ask. I am a company of one person, right? Like my business is me and I can do this for my clients. Yeah. My clients are on automatic bill pay. Yeah. So there, if I can do it. <laughs> there's no excuse. There's just no excuse. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely check it out and um, make that happen because I think that's going to be a huge, huge relief for a lot of people. Yeah. Okay, so my third tip is really specific for ADHD. If you are um, – still having paper. So we're going back to like actual paper. Um, Your systems need to be very simple and easy. So in my blog post this week that is coming up, I'm going to be going over some of the more common mistakes that people make um, when they're setting up filing systems. So definitely be on the lookout for that. But for for today, this show, I want to cover up or cover some of the things that I want you to do when you're setting up a file system. Um, using hanging files. I know this sounds really silly or simple, um, but a lot of people will use those manila folders, you know? Yeah. yeah. And they get so like beat up and you can't see them because they like fold and they get caught and then you can't open the drawer. Oh, what about that? Yeah. (laughs) What about this? Do you have people who use manila files and put them in hanging, color-coded hanging files? Yes. Yeah. I used to do that. That was me. That I was that guy. Yeah. 
it's Absolutely. impossible to manage a system like that. It's re- and as somebody who's done it, I don't know what I, it's like. I was putting paper in a safe, locking it, and forgetting the the code. Oh, that's totally. that's the yeah. equivalent of it because yeah. it was so far out of sight uh, that it, it seems strange to say that just a little piece of Manila paper would be that much of a deterrent to action, but it is. It is. It is. So if you just use hanging files, you know, just across the board. It's clean. It's easy. You can find what you're looking for. So that's that's the first tip, I think, of making your systems easy. Color code if it works for you. I have had some clients that say color coding saves their lives. It's easy easier for them um, to be able to separate categories. And then I've had other people tell me that it really doesn't matter. So I think it 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 uh, it, it's up to you. But if it may if it works. And it gets you to file the paper, then, you know, by all means, color code. So you're going to have different colors for, of hanging files, right? Yeah. (laughs) Still not going back to the other folders. This is an idea that, um, I don't even know where I got it. I apologize. Whoever created this, I don't even know if anybody actually created it. I don't know. But anyway, I think it's a great idea and I want to share it. (laughs) Okay, do it. It's it's consider a top 10 list. So what are your top 10 files? Doesn't matter what category they're in, but what are the top 10 that you tend to go to most often? And put put those in your files uh, or your most convenient filing cabinet and put them towards the front. And then the rest can go in the back and by category or however you want to do it. But I just thought this was a really good idea. It's like, okay, this, these are the top 10. I'm going to put them right here because that's, that's the easiest access. Does oh, that make perfect. sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah, no, that's so, great. Um, unless you have really great handwriting, um, I think a label maker is a great investment when you're setting up your files, not only for your files, but around the house for like organizing bins and things like that, that you, um, are labeling. I just think it's a cleaner look. It's easy to, to look at that bin or look at that file and know that that's where all of my insurance paper goes, or that's yeah. where, um, you know, all of the, the, I don't know, toys or I mean, whatever it is that you're putting in bins, but, um, uh, you know, label makers are not that expensive and, I just think they're a great organizing tool yeah. for anyone. For everyone. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. everyone. My, you know, everyone. the danger is, you know, when you have, once you have a kid that discovers the benefit of a label maker, yeah. everything becomes something that needs labeling. Well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fun part of mm-hmm. it. So anyway, all right. So my last um, sort of tip here or category that I want to talk about is maintaining your paper and paying attention. So I was listening to a podcast recently, um, and David Allen was the guest Mm -hmm. and he said something in the interview that really resonated with me. And I don't remember exactly what the question was, but he, he basically said he's confident that no matter how messy or disorganized things get in his world, that he knows he can pick it up and bring it back to order. And I thought, wow, that's how I feel. (laughs) (laughs) And that's how I want my clients to feel. But it is, I like, I totally understood what he was saying because I think that people assume that I have a really organized home, right? Because I was a professional organizer. I talk about this stuff. I teach, I teach this and I don't always have an organized home. I mean, that was the whole reason why I had to gut out my master closet last week is because it got so unorganized. But I think that the key there was that I know how to clean it up. Yeah. And that's what he's saying is that it doesn't, it it doesn't matter that my world may go in disarray. I know how to clean it up. Um, But you just have to take the time to do it. And, you know, again, going back to self-promotion, which, you know, I'm always uncomfortable doing that. I'm not a good salesperson, (laughs) right? (laughs) But but I want to go back to the guided presentations because that's what this gives you. These, both of them for taking control of your space and also for the paper solution, it gives you the steps on how to do it so that you can also trust yourself to know that when you backslide or things start getting out of control, because they will, that you clearly know what to do next and that you also have that freedom of it doesn't matter how messy it gets because I know how to fix it. That's right. 
Isn't that great? It's I mean, isn't powerful. that a great it, place to be? It's yeah. incredibly empowering. It is incredibly empowering. As as messy as whatever system you have, for me, it's it, you know, it's my favorite OmniFocus. When that gets out of hand, at least I know now, after many years of struggle, I feel pretty confident that when I sit down in a half hour, I'll be able to get my life into control. Absolutely. You Absolutely. know, I because you mentioned podcast and David Allen in the same sentence, I have a I, I have a plug that I think will help. And it is David Allen's Getting Things Done podcast. It's not It's not really David Allen's. It's his business, Getting Things Done. But I put a link to it in the show notes. And they only have seven episodes. I don't know how committed they are to it. But there are two episodes that I really, 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 really want to encourage people to just go listen to. If you have ever thought about getting things done and, and uh, the importance of you know having a process, um, Episode three, David Allen does essentially a guided meditation of a mind sweep. So if you feel like you're super cluttered, particularly around your finance stuff, how important is this in your head to be able to sit down and say, gosh, do I have all the bills that I need? No, I need to contact to go paperless. Do I have all of the phone numbers and websites and addresses? Do I have all the passwords and usernames to log into the things? It, it he actually guides you through his process of going through a mind sweep and i think you can by extension really take this to getting all this stuff out of your head and finding clarity the second episode is episode 7 which is done by uh, one of the getting things done or the david allen company coaches meg edwards where she guides you through a weekly review so you can oh nice yeah and and really stop, and it's one of those things she says okay here's what i want you to do next i'm going to play a little music pause the podcast and and do this thing and it is uh, it, it really, really great. It's and so you know, for those of you who have ever thought about GTD and David Allen, um, you know, and have, have tried it, that's a really good uh, resource. Um, I think it really it it's sort of uh, it's not quite as because it it doesn't have the visual element as the guided presentations that that we've done, um, you know, with Nikki. I think they're these kinds of tools where somebody else can be your proxy coach for just a little while really help to entrench a new habit to really help you understand how to do these things. That's why the, the paper, um, you know, guided presentation is so valuable. Well, and I think that in anything, you know, if you can take pieces from, from GTD and you can take pieces from the paper solution and then you kind of form your own you know, process, that's ideal because, you know, that's the thing about, um, I love a lot of David Allen stuff. But then there's a lot of it that I don't know if somebody with ADHD yeah, there's a lot would of it really, doesn't work. Yeah. yeah, that that maybe it wouldn't work, and you have to tweak it a little bit. Right. And so I think it is a really a matter of of figuring out what works for you, but still listening to the concepts and then just figuring out, okay, this is how my brain works. How can I take that concept and tweak it enough so that that it works for me? And and it's the same with the paper solution too. You may go through that and think, okay, well, I I know I can't do this suggestion, but I can tweak it just a bit so that I can or whatever. So, um, I do that with everybody that, you know, Brian Tracy, all of those great leaders in productivity and time management, you take the pieces that resonate Mm -hmm. and, and then that's what you, uh, start to to develop for yourself. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. What else did we, did we wrap it up? Was that it? Yeah, that's it. I, I've got nothing else for you, but next week we're going to be talking about setting up a financial plan and a budget. I love it. Okay. I don't, the budget stresses me out. Oh, it totally stresses me out. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, good. (laughs) I said that with such enthusiasm. I know. It makes me think that you really are (laughs) budgeting is your forte. And I know in fact that (laughs) that you and your your family are actually, uh, you you have a a skill at this, whether you like it or not. Uh, I, I, alas, this is an area that I need, I need to focus on. So I look forward to that conversation. Yes. Uh, thank you, everybody. Don't forget, uh, give us a ring, uh, the six five zero three six six four four ADD, Twitter and Facebook at Take Control ADHD. Uh, other than that, on behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm-hmm.